Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by an author of 68 books on rock and roll and show business, author of multiple New York Times bestsellers. His investigative piece covers Joe Cocker in Joe Cocker with a lot of help from his friends. We welcome Mark Bio. Thank you. Good morning to you. Mark, let's go beyond the mic. Joe is a stubborn man. Several times in your book, you referred to times where his passion for music was his way or no way. I was surprised with you with all the times he said no to things that he made it in the music industry. It's pretty amazing. You know, the the title with a lot of help from his friends is actually very apt because he really, um, you know, fell down with liquor problems, with depression problems, with drug problems, and just kind of hating the business side of the music business. So after the Mad Dogs at Englishman tour in 1970, when he was a huge star, instead of pursuing his career and getting back on tour immediately, he laid around at his parents' house, did drugs, and got depressed. So this this kind of set the tone. You know, and the funny thing is, when I started doing research for this book, I had no idea what his personal life was like. He was, it was, so the book comes out as a reportage of what I found out about someone I really knew nothing about. I knew his music. I certainly, uh, you know, all the accolades that he, he had received, but I really knew nothing about what made him tick. What's the one fact in your research that shocked you the most about Joe? Well, the crazy thing was was something I'd never heard of in my entire life. I'd never heard of anyone drinking so much that they would arrive on stage drunk, continue drinking, have a an unfortunate roadie holding a bucket behind the piano. Joe would vomit, continue singing, and continue drinking alcohol. It's, I mean, that was just, I, I realize that's not a really good morning conversation, but this was the kind of alcoholism that he was in the middle of. When your debut novel was given praise from Cindy Adams in the New York Post years ago, do you think that you'd be on the way to writing several screenplays and nearly 70 books? No, I really didn't. When I arrived in New York City with the clippings from my college newspaper, uh, you know, with discovery written all over, discover me, I should say, written all over uh, myself, uh, I had no idea that I could launch into this book career as as successfully as I did. I mean, it took years to do it. Uh, I arrived and started a job at Grosset and Dunlap Publishers in the contracts department. And as I was typing a contract one day, I thought, I want my name on one of these. And actually, it was my boss at Grosset and Dunlap who ended up buying my first two books, Barry Manilow and The Captain and Tennille. Once you were on the outs with Joe, you were never almost let back in. How (laughs) ironic that most famous song was about help from his friends. Exactly. Exactly. Um, He had, you know, really odd relationships with a lot of his friends. And uh, yeah, he would, especially Michael Lang in the book, who was one of the organizers of Woodstock. Michael Lang really gave Joe that showcase to for the whole world to discover him via Woodstock, the album, the documentary, the half a million people who were there. And so a couple of years later, when Joe needed a new manager, he turned to Michael Lang and Joe was in terrible shape at the time. This was the late 70s. And Michael Lang really brought him back from the dead, literally and figuratively. And when Joe decided to make a move in the 90s and sign with Roger Davies, who brought back Tina Turner's career, um, he just quit talking to Michael. He he um, had someone else for him and never spoke to him again. So that was the kind of guy he was. He could just ice you right out of his life. Mark Bigo, author of Joe Cocker, with a lot of help from his friends, joins us beyond the mic for the Rocky Nate. Eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. Mark, what's the one of your 68 books that didn't get the love that you thought it should have? Uh, the first time around the Elton John book, I thought the Elton John book was perfect timing. Uh, but then it was reprinted a couple of years later and did get uh, became much more successful. That was one I was really shocked about. And just a second one, the Billy Joel. I really put a lot of a lot of heart and soul into that one. And it was one of those situations where right after the publication party, the publisher announced to me, oh, by the way, we've gone bankrupt. <laughs> so I was very disappointed. Who is the one person that you want to write a book about but haven't yet? I want to write a book with Ringo Starr. Oh, Ringo. That would be cool. Yeah. 
he, well, he does his own books and, and I've been in contact with his manager and he said, well, I'll call you when Ringo's ready. Film rights to your book have been sold. Who should play Joe Cocker in the movie? Well, it's a shame we don't have uh, John Belushi because he would have been the perfect person. We need a John Belushi clone who can nail Cocker like he did. What's your favorite recipe from your Eat Like a Rock Star book? Tiffany's Cinnamon Lebanese Chicken. An absolute hit whenever I make it for a dinner party. Best place to vacation? The south of France. How about the last song you remember hearing? Um, Let It Be by Joe Cocker about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> what was the first concert you ever attended? Uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Masonic Auditorium, November 1969. And in the middle of the show, they said, we want to bring one of our friends out. She's going to sing with us. Uh, we hope you give her a big round of applause. Her name is Joni Mitchell. How did that change your life? Well, I, I was in love with the music and in love with going to concerts after that. You're from Arizona. Have you ever visited the ghost town of Jerome? You know, I never have. I know exactly where it is, but I've yet to make it there. I've been up to uh, uh, to Sedona and I've been to the Grand Canyon and Flagstaff and I've skied in uh, Sholo, but I haven't made it there yet. We'll sneak in one more with Mark Bego. What's the common thread from all your stars of all your books? Is there one? Well, since I write books about rock and roll um, and groups, you know, groups and individuals, the groups and and the individuals like Joe, um, we were struggling and we loved each other and we just wanted to make music. Then we got famous. Then we got rich. Then we had a drug problem. Then we went into rehab and now we hate each other. <laughs> Uh, Hall and Oates is a case in point uh, of this exact week. So what's your thread? <laughs> My fascination with the music. I always loved the music and I would sit and listen to albums and uh, wonder what the people were like who sang these songs. So I made a career out of discovering what their personal lives were like and reporting them to the public. I know Joe's story, and there were several times where I would go, Joe, no, no, not, not again. again. <laughs> well, exactly. When I was working on the screenplay, the, the producer said, well, how many scenes can we have where he gets drunk and passes out under the piano and vomits? Well, that happens se seemingly every week. <laughs> it's time for one big question with author of Joe Cocker with a lot of help from his friends, Mark Bego. What's the best thing about your good friend, Mary Wilson? Mary Wilson was the most wonderful fun loving sincere and classy person i have ever had in my life and i miss her every day why so much she and i had so much fun we laughed together we love to go to uh gala premieres and get all dressed up and have fun and 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 just really enjoy life and she was someone who was every inch a supreme uh and we were to, when we were together late at night drinking and carrying on and and talking she was just just a, a best friend she was everything you'd want in a best friend he fell in love with joni mitchell loves the south of france and you will enjoy his lebanese chicken his book <laughs> is joe cocker with a lot of help from his friends mark bigo thanks for taking the time to talk with us today thank you my pleasure and that my friends is i'll be on the mic shortcut